Okay, so as you can see, the title of this video, one of the many reasons why oneness Pentecostalism is false. I'm not going to be outlining a lot of reasons. I'm just going to give one reason. And then based upon my reading of God's Word and my evaluation of God's Word, I have to test my beliefs and my traditions according to to God's Word because I believe in Sola Scriptura and one of the things that Sola Scriptura is is this all traditions are to be subject to the higher authority of Scripture I have traditions I have beliefs do my beliefs and my traditions match up with the higher authority of God's Word because they are subject to the higher authority of God's Word. So, I am very much aware that there are beliefs within the Oneness Pentecostal movement or denomination, if you want to call it that. I grew up Pentecostal, so I am very much aware of the chaos that goes on in the worship services of Pentecostalism on a whole. But I'm not going to be talking about that. The reason why I mentioned that is because a lot of the ways in which Pentecostals worship is based upon tradition and not Bible. And as I said, we all have to examine our traditions according to the Word of God, comparing them to the Word of God, and make adaptations to the Word of God where necessary. But getting into the topic at hand. So, every time I speak to a Oneness Pentecostal, this is what I hear. When I quote verses like John chapter 1, verse 1, John chapter 17, verse 5, and Philippians chapter 2, verse uh, 8 through 11, they say that Jesus Christ did not pre-exist his birth at Bethlehem as a person, but rather he pre-existed his birth at Bethlehem as a plan in the mind of God. In that they will say, Jesus Christ is the Lagos of God, and through the Lagos was everything made Therefore, God spoke, and it was God speaking is Jesus Christ, who is the Word. Therefore, Jesus Christ was not a person who was with the Father before the world was, but rather Jesus Christ was a plan in the mind of God before the world was, and Jesus Christ was a thought in the mind of God before the world was. This is how they explain these verses. But, as I said, when you have traditions, when you have beliefs, you have to do a thorough examination of your beliefs according to the scripture. Read from Genesis to Revelation and see if your beliefs and traditions stand the test and pass the test of scripture. So, since that is what I hear from Pentecost, Oneness Pentecostals, that Jesus Christ did not pre-exist as a person, but rather he was in the mind of God. Here's a problem with that. Here's a very, very serious problem with that. I know that those of you who are watching this video, because I'm going to be posting this video on my Oneness Pentecostal playlist and the Oneness Pentecostal and Trinity debate groups on my Facebook because I'm in Oneness and Trinity debates groups on Facebook. I'm going to be posting this video there and you're, you're all going to watch this video and you're going to comment on this video and you're going to share this video and you're going to respond to what I'm saying. But I'm going to make a statement that I'm sure that you will all agree with me. And if you don't agree with me, give me reasons why. Here we go. Here's a statement. There is no succession in the mind of God. There is no succession in the mind of God. 
What I mean is, there is no succession of events and no succession of people in the mind of God, but rather, everyone and everything exists in the mind of God as a steady, still, static, what do you want to call it? It's still. It's not something that happens, A happens, B happens after, C happens after, D happens after. But rather, when God looks at time, he doesn't see it as a sequential event, but rather he sees it as one thing, and he sees it as something he can look from A to B, and he sees everything in between. So time itself appears to God as one thing. And it is the same for us human beings. My great, 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 great grandfather and I myself, when God was looking in time from A to B, from beginning to end, he did not see my grandfather, which would come into existence out of his mind, that's God's mind, which would come into existence out of God's mind, and then he did not know anything about me God did not know anything about me until I was then born further down the line hundreds of years later. But rather, God saw my grandfather, great-great-grandfather, and God saw me the same time, the same time in his mind. And we, we can't even use the word time when we're describing this. What I'm saying is every single individual who will ever exist Every single individual who has ever existed, and every single individual who does exist, is seen by God in the mind of God as being, as being non-successive, if I can put it that way. There's no succession. Everything is non-successive in the mind of God. And how else can I put this? Okay, so God knows all things, therefore he knows all who will exist. He knows all things, therefore he knows all that will happen in time. And he knows all things because he has decreed all things. Therefore, everything that God thinks about in his mind, about the events of the universe, the people who will be born, God sees them in a non-successive way. God sees them simultaneously. Okay? God sees them simultaneously. So when I can say this, for example, my father existed before I existed. I am speaking of my father's birth. My father's birth. He existed before I existed. But in the mind of God, my father and I existed at the same, I can't even use the word time. My father and I existed in the mind of God as a plan to come into existence by the creation of God in a simultaneous way. I can't use the word same time because this is out of time. So I have to say it this way. My father and I existed in the mind of God simultaneously as the plan of God to one day be the creation of God where my father would come into existence before I did, and then later on, through God's means, I would come into existence. So I hope that I'm being clear here, that that's as clear as I can explain things that go on in eternity, okay? But I'm sure you'll agree with me that nothing happens in the mind of God in a successive way, but rather in a simultaneous way. And I can't use the word simultaneous time, or happens at the same time, because we're talking about God's mind as an eternal, uh, as an eternal state. So, here's the problem. Here is the problem. In the book of John, when John the Baptist is speaking about Jesus Christ, John the Baptist says, about Jesus that Jesus existed before he existed this here's the problem here's the problem okay John the Baptist 
according to historical record, is six months older than Jesus. Because John the Baptist was born six months before Jesus. If Jesus Christ did not exist until his birth at Bethlehem, then John the Baptist is speaking a lie. But rather, since Jesus Christ existed as a person before the foundation of the world, John the Baptist can say, Jesus existed before I, or Jesus existed before me. And this is John chapter 1, verse 30. John the Baptist 32 and 33 John the Baptist says John testified saying I have seen the spirit descending as a dove out of heaven and he remained upon him I did not recognize him but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me he upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I did not read verse 30. Verse 30 says this, This is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. Remember, there is no succession in the mind of God. Everything is seen simultaneously. If John the Baptist is speaking about Jesus Christ's existence in the mind of God, then John the Baptist saying the words, Jesus Christ existed before me, would not make any sense in the mind of God since God does not see things in a successive way. It would mean that what if God saw things in a successive way, then this text would mean Jesus Christ existed before John the Baptist in the mind of God, and John the Baptist was not known in the mind of God before John the Baptist was known in the mind of God. You see how nonsensical that sounds? It would mean that Jesus was known in the mind of God before John the Baptist was known in the mind of God. How does that work since God knows all things? How does that work since God decrees all things? How does that work since God, when he looks at time and looks at the people in time from A to B, he sees all things simultaneously and he sees Jesus and John the Baptist simultaneously before their existence in the mind of God, before he created them since there were plans of God to come into existence. How is it that John the Baptist can say, Jesus existed before I, or before me, when if everything is in the mind of God, and everything is simultaneous? How can John say that? I'll tell you how can, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, because Trinitarianism is true. There's one God who exists eternally as three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, God the Son, existed before the world began as a person in the presence of the Father, according to John chapter 1, verse 1, and John chapter 17, verse 5. And because he existed in the presence of the Father, and God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, knows all things, they know all things simultaneously and know that John the Baptist as a plan of God to come into existence would come into existence. And John the Baptist can say these words of Jesus. He existed before me. You know why? Because 
Jesus is an eternal person and he existed before his birth at Bethlehem. You oneness Pentecostals who say that Jesus Christ did not exist before his birth in Bethlehem, you have a problem with John chapter 1 verse 30 because you have John the Baptist who is six months older than Jesus saying that Jesus Christ existed before him. If you're going to make the statement he existed in the mind of God before John the Baptist, that does not make any sense and that is false because God sees all things simultaneously including John the Baptist and Jesus. There is no such thing as being before or being after in the mind of God because all things in the mind of God is simultaneous. When he looks at time, if Jesus Christ was a man and only a man and he didn't come into existence until the birth of Bethlehem, then when God looks at time, he sees Jesus and he sees John the Baptist simultaneously. Jesus can't say he existed before John the Baptist and John the Baptist cannot say that he existed before Christ because they were both seen in the mind of God simultaneously the same way I cannot say my father existed before I did in the mind of God because God saw my dad and myself simultaneously in his mind as plans to bring into existence in creation at some point in time. I can't say that my father existed before I did and he can't say I existed before he did and vice versa. But rather I can say my father existed before me in time because he was born before I did. But if I were to ever say, well, if my father were to ever say of me, my son existed before me. That's stupid. That, that makes no sense. That's, that's, that's a lunatic. That's someone crazy speaking. Because that would mean <laughs> I was around before my dad did what he needed to do to conceive me. Doesn't make any sense. Same here we have John saying he, that's Jesus, existed before me. John is speaking about Jesus because John says in verse 27, it is he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things, verse 28, these things took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. And then verse 29, to show you he's talking about Jesus, the human being. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then in verse 30 he says, This Lamb of God, Jesus, the man, the human being who he was looking at and talking about, he said this human being existed before he did. How can he say that? If Jesus Christ isn't an eternal person who came down from heaven, became flesh, and dwelt among us, having pre-existed in eternity past, with the Father as God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. How can he say that if the Trinity isn't true? I'll tell you how he can say that. I'll tell you. Because the Trinity is true. The Trinity is biblical. There's one being, one essence, one God who exists eternally as three distinct persons, who exists eternally in three distinct persons the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit possess the divine essence spoken of in Colossians 2 verse 9 where the scripture says that in him dwells all the fullness of theotetos or theotes the state of being God and a similar word is used in John in, in Romans chapter 1 verse 20 phi ates which means divine nature but theotetos is what dwells in Christ bodily the fullness of theotetos the state of being God look that word up Colossians 2 9 and it is only used once in the entire New Testament and theotes is only used once in the entire New Testament and it means divine nature found in Romans chapter 1 verse 20. In Christ dwells all the fullness of the state of being God. That is, that belongs to the Holy Spirit, that belongs to the Father, that belongs to the Son, 
equally the one divine essence, the one being, is possessed by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we Trinitarians say one God, we mean one being, one essence. When we say three, we mean personhood, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One is what God is. Person is who God is. Plurality of person. And that's not the only problem. And I, I, I am so excited to hear what you all have to say about this. I've only been going for 20 minutes. I'm not going to go over 25 minutes. So bear with me here. One last one. One last thing. And for those of you who are fellow Trinitarians, you can use this argument as well. One last thing. John chapter 6, verse 46. It says, Not that any one has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. So, if Jesus Christ was a thought and a plan in the mind of God before his birth, at Bethlehem and he did not pre-exist as a person God the Son when did he see the Father can you show me in the entire Bible where Jesus saw the Father where where did he see the Father was it at his baptism doesn't say he saw the Father. You can't find it there. If you were going to assume, you need to have very, very good reason to assume. And very, very compelling evidence from Scripture to assume. When did Jesus Christ see the Father in his earthly ministry? When? And on top of that, for those of you who want Pentecostals who believe that Jesus Christ is just a man, and he's not also God, as a distinct person then you have a problem with 1st Timothy 6 15 to 16 because 1st Timothy 6 15 to 16 says this who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Verse 16. No man has seen, no man can see. If Jesus Christ is just a man, as a matter of fact, we know he's a man. 1 Timothy 2.5. There's one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. He's a man. When did this man, who did not exist before the foundation of the world as a divine person, see the Father in his earthly ministry. When? When did he see the Father? And if he saw the Father, who is God, how, how doesn't that contradict 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, which says, no man has seen, no man can see. You see the problem here? But if Jesus Christ is God, the second person of the Trinity, if Jesus Christ is God, the eternal Son, if Jesus Christ is God, who pre-existed his birth at Bethlehem as the eternal son of God. He was with the Father. He saw the Father. John 1.18 No one has seen, the, uh, has seen God any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has revealed him. In the bosom of the Father means in the presence of the Father. Unless you're going to say in Luke chapter 16 where it says that Abraham, that, that, that Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom means Lazarus was in the mind of Abraham. And in the thought and plan of Abraham. Unless you're going to say that, don't say anything. Because what it means to be in the bosom of the Father is to be in the presence of the Father. The same way Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, meaning Lazarus was in Abraham's presence. Not in his mind as a plan that you all so commonly say. But those are the problems. John chapter 1 verse 30 which says that John has Jesus pre-existing him John saying of Jesus Jesus Christ pre-existed him but John is six months older and John chapter 6 verse 46 which says 
No one has seen the Father, but he who is from God, which is Jesus Christ, has seen the Father. How can he see the Father if he's just a man? And when did he see the Father if not in eternity past? Because if he saw the Father in eternity past, then that means he pre-existed his birth in Bethlehem. And one is Pentecostalism is false with, regarding the doctrine of, uh, of the nature of God. And if he's just a man, how doesn't it contradict 1 Timothy 6.16, which says that no man has seen or can see God? So, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to call it two reasons. Two reasons why when is Pentecostalism is false. That's John 1.30 and John 6.46. We're going to end this here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you comment and share this video. And for my Trinitarians out there, my brothers and sisters, you can use this argument as well. Because in the one is Pentecostal perspective, these passages don't make sense. Well, John 1.30 doesn't make sense. And John 6.46 contradicts 1 Timothy 6.16. If the one is Pentecostal perspective is true. But since it's not true, then the Trinitarian doctrine of God's nature is vindicated because the one is Pentecostal view and perspective on these passages is negated or invalidated by the scripture. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Oh, 26 minutes. Come on, you can watch the whole thing. Only 26 minutes. You'll have a good day. Uh, pray me up uh, like, share subscribe for more God bless you